This is a cross section of a muscle. And what you can tell is there are different muscle fiber types. In this video, we're gonna figure out how you can tell if you're more on the fast twitch side with more type two fibers, or if you're more on the slow twitch side with more type one fibers. We'll also talk about how that relates to training and the exercises you're gonna to choose to do. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to start off, let's talk about the difference between type one muscle fibers and type two muscle fibers. Type one muscle fibers are our slow twitch muscle fibers. These are generally used in things like jogging or lighter resistance training, other aerobic activities. If the weights we're lifting are not heavy enough, then we're only gonna really need to use our type one fibers and our type two fibers that are faster and fatigue more quickly will kind of stay in reserve and we won't need to use them for lighter activities. By contrast, our type two fibers are fast twitch. When we're doing heavy resistance exercises or fast movements or powerful explosive movements, we use more of our type two muscle fibers. With that said though, we don't turn off our type ones and then only use our type twos. It kind of works Either we're using our type ones or we're using our type ones and our type twos. So with heavier resistance training, we're using both our type ones and our type two muscle fibers. There's something called the Henneman size principle that explains this concept. Basically, if we're lifting a weight that we can lift for 20 or 30 repetitions, we'll only need to use those type ones. But as we use a heavier weight that we could only do 10 reps or only do five reps for, in order to lift that, we need to use more of our type two muscle fibers. So we recruit more and more bigger, fast twitch muscle fibers as we get heavier or faster in the weights that we're moving. Now, this is the general principle of how we activate our muscle fibers, but it is different from one muscle group to another. For example, if we look at the calf muscle, which is made of two different muscles, the soleus and the gastrocnemius muscle, one of them is fast twitch and one of them is more slow twitch. The gastrocnemius muscle or your superficial outer calf muscle tends to be more fast twitch. So that's the one you use for more explosive movements and jumping movements. By contrast, your deeper soleus muscle is more involved in walking and aerobic activity and it tends to be more of a slow twitch muscle. This is true whether you do sprinting or whether you do distance running. Those muscles just generally have that distribution towards more fast twitch or towards more slow twitch. For other muscle groups like your quadriceps, specifically your vastus lateralis, that muscle can change from being more fast twitch or more slow twitch quite significantly based on genetics and training. For an average 40 year old individual, this muscle might be around 50% fast twitch, slow twitch, but for race walkers who are very aerobic and endurance based in their training, they tend to have much more slow twitch in this muscle. By contrast, the vastus lateralis of sprinters tends to be very fast twitch. So there are definitely a lot of muscle groups throughout the body where the training that you do can shift you towards being more fast twitch or being more slow twitch, which significantly changes your performance. So let's talk about the three primary training types that shift you towards being more fast twitch. Number one would be training for power. This would include things like explosive, heavy resistance exercises like quarter squats, as well as Olympic lifts or explosive step ups. These types of explosive, but still heavy resisted exercises emphasize power output, meaning moving a lot of weight in minimal amount of time. Depending on the exercise, this could be anywhere from around 60% of your one rep max up to 80 or 90% of your one rep max to maximize power output. The second type of training that can shift you towards being more fast twitch would be plyometric training. Now, a lot of people think of plyometric training as doing just a lot of box jumps or repeated vertical jumps, but I want to be more specific about what plyometric training actually is. Good plyometric training typically involves a lot of hops and skips and pogo hops and things like that where we're moving quickly, but not maximally. We're preparing and building capacity of the Achilles tendon and other tendons to be elastic and store and release energy. Plyometrics does involve maximal jumps as well. For example, repeated broad jumps, explosive box jumps, or power skips or other exercises like that. The key is that true plyometrics are using the stretch shortening cycle where our muscles are contracting in a near isometric way while our tendons stretch and shorten to absorb and release load. The third type of training that can shift you towards being more fast twitch is speed based training. Now this is different than power and it's different than plyometrics. Speed based training could involve sprinting, but it could also involve med ball throws, band assisted jumps or other fast movements with low load. 
doing these really fast movements can actually teach our muscles to pre-activate because we learn the motor pattern really well of doing these very fast movements leading to faster activation of our muscles and faster activation of our fast twitch muscles. When they're executed well, these three types of training for fast twitch muscle fibers can be very effective, but there are a lot of mistakes that are commonly made here. Number one is just doing the exercises too slow. To get the most out of fast twitch muscle fiber training, we need to be moving explosively. That means we need to be having maximal intent of moving the bar as fast as possible. If you're used to doing really slow and controlled repetitions with a bodybuilding style, you may end up not getting the most out of training where it's more fast twitch oriented because you have to get used to moving the bar as fast as possible and being really explosive. Another mistake is not enough rest between sets. While if you're doing bodybuilding, you can get away with one or two minutes of rest and really doing a lot of supersets and fatiguing your muscles a lot, that's not how we wanna do fast twitch muscle fiber training. We need to fully rest and have at least three minutes between our sets. This is going to allow us to be maximally explosive and have our nervous system give the most output to each set and each repetition. If you're not resting enough, you may see that your jump performance doesn't increase. And then another mistake with fast twitch fiber training is too much training volume. Again, if we're trying to maximize muscle building and bodybuilding, we want to do a ton of volume of training. We may be doing three or four sets of 15, 20 repetitions sometimes and putting a lot of volume on our muscles. That type of set and rep really doesn't work well for power training and for fast twitch muscle fibers. If our goal is to train our fast twitch muscle fibers to be explosive and give us the most power output, then we actually want to decrease those sets and reps to something like two sets of three, six sets of two, five sets of four. A good rule of thumb is keeping sets less than six reps so that each of the repetitions within the set can be really explosive. Another thing I wanted to mention is that even when we're training our fast twitch muscle fibers, we're not just training those fibers, we're also training our nervous system. We're training things like nerve conduction velocity and our ability to recruit muscle fibers faster. We're also improving muscular coordination and how well our muscles work together to create a movement pattern. If your goal is to be more fast twitch and explosive, then all of those other adaptations will work hand in hand as long as we're training in the right way with power exercises, with plyometrics, with explosive speed-based movements, all done with appropriate rest, volume, and progression. Comment down below whether you think you are generally more fast twitch or more slow twitch. If you're looking for a program to be more athletic and more fast twitch, you can check out the Movement System Vertical Jump program in the description below. Make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.